the red or the velvet side? The first one is their velvet side. Mm. <laughs> the velvet yeah. side is their sexy side, right? Yes. Got well, it. I mean, they're always sexy. But it's their R and B side. Yeah. Mm. So, so okay, their sexy side. They had another comeback where they put out a velvet song and a red song, and but the first song that they put out was the velvet song, so that's what we'll be watching first. One of these nights. One, yeah. two, three. I appreciate the strings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got a nice little orchestra there. Strings. Oh. So poppy with So strings. lovey dubby. Oh. That harmony caught you by surprise. I wonder if that piano is gonna stay there the whole time. I have a feeling it's just gonna go away and it's gonna go crazy. And then it's gonna catch on fire. Yeah. Dang, the piano is actually really nice using some cool extensions on top. I love how it has like an orchestral kind of like beginning, but then just fades like just piano. They all have great voices though. Like they never like settle for like kind of okay voices. <laughs> I like electronic feels, like oh, kind nice. of seep in there for like uh -huh. a split second and disappear. Uh -huh. There's some Doctor Strange stuff happening here. I like their voice harmonies there. <laughs> that wind chime is back. Oh my god. Oh, that's a nice chord. That is a different key. That's a new that key. was a very different, unrelated that was key. Very direct. That was an unprepared modulation. That was good. That was good. Whoa, she's coffee. That's tea. <laughs> she, she is coffee. <laughs> it's gonna go. All right, but that's gonna go A. It's gonna go somewhere else. Cool it's like melody. sparkly sounding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Did you hear? Oh! Yo! Oh, oh, what? No. <laughs> this is so dope! Oh my god! <laughs> what is she doing? Being sad? Have you ever experienced sadness, Lindsay? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Digging the beat now. The chord changes are really cool. Yeah, because you're using different. Oh! And again? The subtle trap beats. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what? It's such a subtle trap beat. It's so good. Like it changes the vibe of it from like chill to like cool. I hate to say it, I'm underwhelmed with the vocals. I am a little underwhelmed. They're not bad, they're just not doing anything. Like here you have a little bit of the background singers, but like it's mostly the soloist as the highlight versus the group. It just like is such a weird, like it, it keeps coming back to the same place, but like it just finds such a weird, like every turn feels like a left turn, and then they still end up in the same place. And they're like, they're like the tone and the vibe of what's going on feels different each time it, it like comes back around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not that it's like predictable, but like you know where the chords are going. Even though it's like super jazzy. Mm -hmm. I love that about like standards. Except sometimes like the key will Yeah, or then the key will change, yeah. I think that's probably the biggest difference I would say. Between. Oh, yeah, they do what they want. Yeah, they don't abide by classical no. theory rules. No. Oh, that oh. can drop as well as it does. Oh. oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Builds you up, lets you down, but then, then gives you what you're looking for about four bars later. I like how like one scene goes into like another. Like they figure out how to like blend like one shot and it like transitions somehow to another. Yeah, and it's like all connected and it builds like the music does. Like the volume or just like the feel of it's so like more like in your face versus at the beginning it's like it just needs more brass. You know? They did this really well. The music, I think, is definitely well better written than most other ones that we've heard tonight. Oh, the wow, 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 wow! Wow. Henry. <laughs> wow. Wow, that was beautiful.
That was fucking incredible. Yeah, well, that was one of that the is, best that is K-pop songs. Hands down, like, my favorite K-pop song I've ever heard. That, wow. Whoa. That's like I whoa. I'm like not only oh, not only fired. am I genuinely going to listen to that like in my free time, but I also want to transcribe this. Goals. It just went in such unexpected ways, and like the melody just kept it like just totally kept your interest because you don't. It doesn't happen in such like a boring, expected way that you could like guess. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't guess where it was going, and it was just like it's like a wild, like emotional ride. Which that's what they're trying to do. So good job, Red Velvet. I really like the kind of fluidity to the piece, but I feel like it doesn't go anywhere. I feel like you just have this kind of beat. You know, it's a good beat and it's a good kind of style they got going, but it's kind of the, the same thing. You know, just for four minutes, which you know I'm cool with. But like music's like a story. Beginning, middle, end with a climax, you know? I I think catch it. Okay, uh, I thought it kind of had two parts. The opening was more so of like, it's like a slow like crawl into it. It's kind of like a, if it were a day, it's like kind of a somber, cloudy day, but it like, it, it kind of opens up with like a morning dew type of thing. Where it's like all the chords are there, like the structure of like what the harmony is going to be throughout the whole piece is kind of being set up and built. And it kind of goes, it goes to a lot of different places harmonically. It's just, it kind of goes back to the beginning, like, but what the second part is obviously like when the like synth and like the beats and the drum tracks come in, which was very well done. Uh, very uh, classic R and B and hip hop type deal. I like the beat. The, the first, rhythm. the first like modulation thing was, was good. cool. But then after and that, then it they happened every single it. time. Yeah, they didn't need to keep modulating. That was just kind of. Okay. I mean, they, they they did they did do one right into the. What's it called? The chorus, which, which obviously you have to repeat that. But there were there was a couple just like in the middle of the song that were like unexpected and like cool, and then they did them again, and you're like less yeah. cool, and then they did them again, expected. and you're like less cool. The greatest thing to do is you never do the same thing twice. Yeah. And I feel like that's where a lot of K-pop kind of falls under the bus a little bit, is they get repetitive. Like one of the main rules. I don't know if you guys have been taught this, but that I was taught when learning music. Never was that you never thing. do the same thing twice. If something repeats, it has to be different. It has to be different. And I feel like a lot of K-pop groups, mainly because a lot of the instrumentation is done in production. Yeah. They just copy. <clears throat> no, and even paste. the vocals. They'll yeah, copy the vocals. and paste for the chorus. And yeah. I think especially with like ballad type songs, the chorus is something you return to and the verse is something has changed. While maintaining a sense of familiarity because people like to hear exactly. what they've heard before. It's, it's finding the balance of bringing mm -hmm. back things that people know, but at the same time also bringing a variant so it's not boring. I think that was probably one of my favorite tracks. Mm -hmm. Just like in general, mm -hmm. out of like everything we've listened to. Out of music that came out of the, re the past five years. <laughs> there was just such a tasteful balance between everything. Like it, was really smooth sailing. It was just active enough. Um, there was just the right amount of sort of like electronic beat and like electronic texture in there, but it stayed fairly acoustic throughout. Just everything was super tasteful, and not only that, it was emotional. Just the way they use, they just use harmony extremely effectively, mm -hmm. which is really rarely something you see in, in pop. Usually, like at, at best, um, a lot of the stuff we reacted to, like that we thought were extremely harmonically interesting, have like used harmonies as sort of like you know glitz and glamour and like sort of like surprise elements. But this group and that song used it for emotional impact. You know, like really used it to connect with the listener. Whoever writes the music for this is really really talented. Yeah, that was really because they really try to differentiate between textures through uh, strings or piano and through background vocals and that kind of thing. They know how to build. There was that one build where like the vocals came in strong, but they didn't bring in the beat until the second time around. Like, yeah, there it was really tasty. There we go. Okay, well this is the next one's gonna be hard to outdo this, but I guess it just depends on the mood because the next one is no like really dance. And hey Emma, do you have gum? No, I'm sorry. Because dumb dumb give me gum gum. <laughs> okay, let's go. Five, four, four three, three two, one. <laughs> I get it because they're saying dumb. Sounds like a magic school bus theme song. Oh, break it down. This is what goes in my head during theory class. <laughs> ah. Okay, nice. I like the really bouncy deep bass. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of a specific drum beat. It's the pretty halftime shuffle. If it was happening underneath this on like an actual drum set that had like a bunch of effects running through, holy shit. It'd be fucking lit. 
nice run. They oh, belt wow. so high. Oh, tap out and bring it down. And like the, like the complexity and rhythm is just like, it's there. Like when they sing the chorus melody, I think it was a mostly a one, two, three, a minor, but then they harmonized it with some major. Yeah. I like how they're using dumb as a motivic fragment to develop throughout the piece. And you're using it not only textually, but also instrumentally. Because you can also audiate the word dumb with the hits and the comments. Mm. Yeah, like, they got like the synth to go and they're killing it. Wait, like, is that brass synthesized or yes. not? I want to stamp this as dumb so I can put out all my homework before I turn it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what they're doing? I actually see, like, so what they're doing, like, with that little. It's, the, the stacking notes. So essentially, it's a cinematic technique. What they do, it's like it's it's like really only expanding to here, but the way they do it, it sounds like it's never ending. It's like an audio, op, an op, it's like an optical illusion for your ear. So it's like your ear it hears it like it's keep rising, but it's not. It's just repeating. I'm like, I love it. I love it. I love it. Like it's been on one, but it's been on both simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. It's major yeah. one, the minor one. Okay, I can't understand why people like the song. Yeah, it's really catchy. Right. Michael Jackson? Are you Billy Jean? You better get it, girl. I don't know. Yo, how do I get my hair to look like that? You hear that sound? It's like Ooh, very sad. It's building. It's empty space and then. Oh, oh my god! god. I just that lost it. We just got good. fools. That was an unexpected transition. I just got it. fucking duped. If it wasn't, oh, that, I would be. It's been another hard. build. There's another build, and we're going again. There we go. Their melody is a natural harmonic minor. But then they're putting the parallel major chord over it. I don't think I heard that. Can we get back to it? I like the background, like. Romanticism. <laughs> Dude, that's that's incredible. That's some good riffs. Yeah, that's some good cute. high notes. Those are good. Maybe it was just Mixolydian. I don't. I, yeah, I, I don't think it was. Yeah, I think it was just Mixolydian. Yeah. But like. My goodness. Natural seven just tends to have a minor tendency. Man, if I could write songs that well, I'd be happy for my entire life. Dude, this is like a contender. I think it's a contender for top group for me. Yeah. I really liked it actually. It was like it, it like, I think I said before, it reminds me of like Lady Marmalade kind of. Yeah, I really um, like it too. I appreciate the brass in it and Yeah, they always have good instrumentation. Yeah. Like lots. I like a wider variety of <laughs> variety. <Yeah. laughs> than American pop music. Yeah. Seriously, it was a, it was really great. It was high energy. Uh, I feel like they messed with the time a lot. Like there are a lot of motives that kept it driving forward. Like the boom 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 boom, and then like they would cycle it back down. But like what was going along with it would keep going higher. So it almost kind of like they could reuse material while keeping something moving forward. Yeah, just like the use of the drum track, like in both like a. Like, uh, I guess, double time, like a half time type deal. If I had to sum all of that experience into one word, it'd be fun. Like, that's what music is, dog. It's fun. I liked whenever I thought it was gonna drop and be like this super crazy beat, but end up being like super smooth. Like, you're like ready for like this, like this usual, like really drivey thing, and then also just like paint. And it was, it was awesome. It, it was just like totally unexpected. And that's what I like. I like being surprised. Because, like, oftentimes, like American pop, it's so predictable. Like, you know where everything is going before it even happens. But, like, that's what I love. It's like, I don't really know anything about K-pop, but I like how it just keeps me, keeps the ear active. Which one do you like better? One of these nights or Dum Dum Dum? Ooh. Dude, one both, of these nights. They were both so but good. But just by an inch. Just by a fraction of an inch. Yeah. Yeah, one of these nights. Mm -hmm. But they're, like, both <laughs> excellent. <laughs> they're both excellent, but for, like, different reasons. Mm -hmm. which, is, which is so amazing, because, like, this group can just be, like, reigning champions of both... Styles and genres. This one. Dum dum dum. Depends on the day. Uh, for me. Do we go 50 50? I think we're gonna go 50 50. And this one, you guys like their red side builder? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I think partially, not not because of the way that they're velvet. Whoa. 
Not because of the way the Velvet Side like works, but just because we like we this girl. song better. Dum dum dum. I liked the first one. I think. Ooh. But I, like, I really like this too. No, totally. I yeah. like the other one too. It's, it's a hard decision. I liked the the rhythmic complexity of it with the brass, but it wasn't like very complex chord wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was it's like easy to follow. Yeah, mm -hmm. easy to like catch on and sing with. I like Dum Dum Dum. Okay. I like the first one though, because I thought it was really intelligent. One of these nights? Yeah. Sharon? I like Dum Dum Dum. Okay. Just because it's just so catchy and. Yeah, everything. it was fun. Yeah. But you know, like that other one was also really. I mean, yeah. I thought the other one was more intelligent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was. I'm gonna call it a tie, because I feel like they're so different. Like, it's apples and oranges. I hate when people say that, but like, I can't like compare. They're both fruit. It's not that. Yeah, you can compare that... apples. I like oranges better. Okay. Don't make me choose. Yeah. Don't make me choose which one I like better, because I like them both so much for different reasons. Both have like different, they have like strengths in such different areas. That one grooves way hard, and the other one just has like so almost no groove, which is like fine. I'm, not that it doesn't I'm have any groove, but like, it's, it's more more melodically interesting than it is like head bobbing interesting. Uh, I like the second one better because it grooved harder. But the first one was more musically interesting. But rhythm is everything, so. I was swept away by the first one. It was so good! You chose the second one, you chose the first one. Yeah, and you're 50 50. Oh, I wow, have to, I'm I have to, the I, I have a moral, Pick! I have a moral obligation to be the tiebreaker. You're gonna pick no, the first no. one. No, he doesn't. Yes, he, does. he wants to pick the second one. He's just there. I think that's just the first one. You first, one. first one! Yeah, I do. Sorry, Neil. 